full final week, there is still a reasonable amount to be decided and what better way to kick it off? All right, so quickly, new substitution coming in for EXL Esports. Zeroa is going to be playing support for this team, so we are going to be missing Medic to start things out with yeah, a new nice. member on this lineup in our final week of regular season. Wrapping around the side. Playing Anna on the lace Yeah, I was going to say, wrapping around the side with an Anna as well. This is a very funky team comp. It's like a, a GOATS-ish. I suppose relying on the bio grenade for extra healing. Tidwat does get the opening kill, but the pressure from EXL starts them out. Mega just getting forced way back. Point is open, and they're fighting very deep in quote unquote mega territory here. So EXL, having won the fight, can now just back right up, grab that point. It's a pretty good start. But Mega as well, they had opportunity to maybe get a counter-attack in there, but they were far too interested in backing all the way towards their own spawn room, and EXL just kept walking forwards, continued doing damage, collecting kills. But Mega Esports now a big change-up for their DPS players. We're gonna go to Junkrat, we're gonna go to Farah. Yeah, just basically answering the lack of hit scan on the side of EXL. I do kind of like this in theory, but with answer? Rocket going down to the charge from Melon, it's, I mean, Already, that's a defense that's starting to go the way of EXL. That is the sort that's a little bit easier to turn around, though. All you need to do is get a couple of uh, a couple of kills in there, but that's easier said than done. Like this team comp wants to sit there and spam some damage out first, and then finish that up. Kind of hard to do that if the enemy is already engaging on. And the other thing is, when you look at the way EXL are engaging right now, twice in two fights, they've been very quick. They've had the initiative. They've been very proactive. It's so far been a lot of Mega Esports on the back foot, just kind of receiving the brunt of that attack and trying to respond in kind, but. We haven't seen a good enough response already. We're seeing an opening kill. Straight away, Melon charges and gets himself one. And you're having a lot of the snowball momentum play through, which is kind of exactly how you want to be playing if you're playing a GOATS S comp, which, if you're not too sure what that is, is a triple support, triple tank lineup, mostly centering around Brian Hart, Zarya, and the D.Va being the being the tanks here and also supported by the Brigida. Do just have a pause out right now. Should have that resolved before too long. But I want to touch on something there with the side of Mega as well, because I think you got the nail on the head. They're in this situation where they're playing reactionarily, uh, sort of in the in the micro game, if you will, but also in the macro game. Like we're already seeing that in the compositional switch up. Look, I do agree with it, but it's it is reactive. It is inherently reacting to what the enemy is playing because what you've got doesn't really seem to work. Pause is just being resolved, so we'll jump straight back into that now. But that has been a little bit endemic of Mega really the whole season long. They haven't been able to play very proactively. Well, they have managed to at least dissuade this push in from EXL for the time being. Melon to get shut down there. It's going to allow Mega to get some opportunity to finally get their feet onto the cap. And you'd expect for Intena and Apudo to out-damage this EXL lineup, assuming Mega can continue to disengage safely while spamming up the damage. And the saving grace is Tidwat Ooh. with that Earth Shatter. Oh, does at least catch. <laughs> That's uh, not really enough mileage. Never mind that. And already the trade's coming straight back in from EXL. Their own Earth Shatter getting a lot more work done. And I like that maneuver by EXL as well. They recognize the GOATS works best when it's moving forward. So they backed off the points so that they had space to move forward into. They're also baiting the Omega to play into the open ground as well, where they don't have to fight into, into, into the chokes, where you don't have a lot of the damage coming out from Enzanar that Apudo, that would be very effective. Now, going to the next fight, should be expecting the Tiger to come through, and it's going to have to be a very important one. The only thing is, they've got to get onto it quickly here. There we go. There's the engaged Tidawat staying alive long enough to finish off Melon. They've got a big opening here. Mega, though, struggling to convert off it immediately. And they're holding onto this rip tire. NZNR doesn't want to use it if he doesn't have oh, to. Oh, good sleep. Ooh, yeah. He's not going to get picked off and punished for it, though, so he is safe for the time being. Yomwon maybe wants it, but safe from Tidawat. Mega back on the point themselves now. And they're still maintaining control of these DPS ults as well. When you're looking at Zaya and Apudo, they haven't had to blow any of their big weapons. So as EXL come in, they realistically have this one resource, which is the Graviton Surge. If they can't get mileage off that, it's not going to happen for them potentially in this bush. You're expecting way high damage output, way too much pressure coming out from Mega. Quick tire out from NZNR. Can't get anything out of that one, unfortunately. Yomwon had the barrier, and now here's That's the answer. kind of missed. Yeah, catch on Melon, and yeah, the grab, unfortunately, whiffed. Rocket Barrage from Opudo. He charged that up quick, smart. Mega looking like they're going to be able to hold on to this, and... Uh, I mean, it was a little bit expensive, actually, but EXL also used what was realistically their only major tool, have also now swapped Yom one off onto something else, so complete compositional shift for EXL. And for EXL, had a decent beginning there as well. Again, they kind of just 
waited out the tire where Enzo didn't get any value off it and then were just a little bit too impatient onto the Graviton Surge. They themselves couldn't get anything done. Now the Nano Boost coming in and oh, the Counter Shatter. That is long. massive. And then the catch on TD what completely shifts the momentum of the fight. Pichu quick enough to save himself with the Transcendence, but can't save any of his teammates, despite the Rezon T to what they all fall down. EXL back on the momentum here as they catch all the members of Mega with the point back under their control, 90%. You're also seeing here, remaining on the Anna and Lucio, so engaging with speed is the key here for EXL. They have had to swap their DPSs over just to deal with what Mega are doing. And as that's happening, you've got Pichu onto the Moira now, Apuda onto Tracer, and oh. Enzina coming back as a Doomfist. Ah, oh, love a good Doomfist. Let's see what he can get done with it. But already Assassin pops Pichu, and it is looking rough. No tank line remaining for Mega. Pudo picked off, unless Enzina plays out of his mind. They are donezo, and he is currently on a wild goose chase against Zero. Uh, Melon is going to come from the backside, hunt him down. Earth Shatter just for good measure. And that is going to be the first point of Oasis going the way of EXL. One thing I do want to point out in terms of a minor meta shift here, and we haven't even gone onto the new patch yet, is for a lot of Korean teams, if you've been paying attention to particularly the Korean scene, they are valuing both Anna and Lucio a lot higher now in terms of picks. They're valuing the Mercy a lot less than you'd expect as well, which is why we saw that Anna Lucio come out as a pretty strong opening lineup for EXL Esports. Did eventually have to change, but it also did give them the lead they required. That's the thing, it doesn't feel too bad to have to change your composition when you're already hovering around that 80% mark. Because realistically, by that point, you only need to win the one fight then you kind of back in action, should be able to close it out all together. And that's exactly what happened. So now EXL holding Mega to match point. Let's see if they can keep it up. So there's going to be a lot of what Apudo can do against Assassin. And if Yom1 can pressure Apudo out such that Assassin can have a quick and easy game. And so far, yeah, hey. it's Apudo drawing first blood. That is ideal for Mega. Trade back is there. Rocket needs to stay alive. Mode oh. goes down. Apudo, though, goes to work. Immediately answers back those two supports. And now EXL are actually throwing all their resources into killing Apudo. That leaves openings for Mega. But Mega aren't really taking advantage of them. Finally closing out on the Divers. Mega, if they can... Well, they do lose the mech, but they should still be able to get the presence on the point to cap it out. It was looking a little bit tricky just before, but now we're sort of back in the same state where, yes, Mega did get a couple of counter trades, but EXL Esports now, because the respawners are back in, they're able to get pressure on the cap, they're able to get these counter trades, and Apuro, now that he's alive, has to once again put the carry pants on. And Mega just backing up, they get all this work done, but they don't occupy the space, they just let EXL Cap's take gone. it. Yeah, now the cap goes over, and it, Mega are immediately losing the subsequent fight. That's really rough. They, they kind of won the fight prior, but didn't take advantage of what opportunities they've created for themselves. EXL just almost by sheer force of audacity hold on to the point. It just wasn't a definitive fight win for Mega there. They got the two kills, three kills I should probably say from Apudo, but aside from that it took a while to get the tanks down and while that was happening the rest of EXL respawned and they didn't lose control of the cap the entire time. In fact they were actually ahead. Now Mega, despite getting that start, are still on the back foot. And again, just trying to get the carry out. Yon one does connect with a pulse bomb. Good bomb as well out onto Gabushi. Oh, Melon, no primal. Mech, but Melon, no such luck. Gabushi staying alive is good news, but with Chloe down, they're going to have a hard time keeping him topped off any further. Maybe able to preserve the mech with the self-destruct, and that buys more time on the point. That is a trade EXL will be willing to make. Mushroom's going to have to do the same, though, so not quite ideal, and I don't believe Gabushi actually self-destructed in the end. So Mega off the back of that. Should be able to cap this over before this percentage gets too high. Somewhat surprising from EXL as well. Melon just going to come in, potentially try and just keep this cap going a bit longer, but you'd expect him to be able to primal rage there. Chloe maybe lives Valkyries, yeah. allows Assassin to get the barrage off. This could have been a very different line of play from EXL, offering a very different result, and they could be at the overtime now. They could have already won this map. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking, right? I mean, even if they lost that fight, they could have pushed it up to that realm of the kind of 80% plus that we were talking about just a moment moment ago but what's done is done because what they have instead is five ultimates and a good engage already gable she does not live to get back in the mech but they've popped Barrage. Barrage out from assassin 
It's Yon one getting the work done though on the ground. NZ and R running circles around these tanks, but Melon with the Primal Rage is currently night unkillable. Mega just slowly losing members bit by bit, getting chipped away at, and just not really answering back in kind to EXL. Not in terms of kills, not even in terms of damage that is sticking on these members. And off the back of that, Mega just under 50%, gonna get the point taken back away from them. Still a reasonably expensive fight for EXL there, so for Mega, the groundwork was still pretty effective. They got the five volts out, which means that EXL don't have those same five volts anymore. They have one sound barrier to work with, but for Mega Esports, expecting them to come back a little bit stronger, and they're gonna have to. This could be their last fight, because EXL are gonna push into the oh. 80s, and Puno's gonna make it count. Nice and quick, finds Assassin unawares. And now gonna get right onto the point. Tito what does hit the pop that primal rage early. So now Mega need to make hay Here's while the barrier. sun is shining. Barrier on zero air. He's no, doesn't pop it out in time. That's a bit of a boo-boo. Maybe just accepting that they probably can't win this fight anymore and wanting to hold on to it for the next one. But that does mean Mega have won this fight. If they're choosing to forego these fights right now, it might be a little bit premature of them to suggest that, okay, well, we'll just keep giving back the point. We'll just keep resetting this. It's very difficult sometimes to retake this point. I think for EXL Esports, they need to be a little bit more considerate of holding on to the cap. Zero should have considered using the sound barrier to save Chloe's life and then kind of recovering from the team fight from there. But now, again, they have to be in attacking position, not really where EXL want to be. Also made the swap over onto the Genji. Long way away from that ultimate. Chloe in trouble here, gonna get drilled down. There's the sound barrier to save Chloe's life. And again, they make it work out. They pop a Pudo. Rocket cannot get in for a res here. Indeed is down in his own right. Mushroom out of the mech. Pichu picked off and EXL just when we're questioning whether they maybe shouldn't have given that point over, they show that they can take it whenever they want. It is their point. Mega were just house setting, as it were. And with that 98, 99, there will be overtime. But I don't know that Mega will be able to even get to the point in that overtime. That's going to be the 2-0 completed for EXL. They pick up Oasis. You can see the shift in priority for EXL as well in understanding what they need to get down first, what they need to be able to pressure. Apuro with the opening three picks in that initial fight. That didn't even really allow Mega to win. You'll probably see it in this exact play of the game. But after this, look, Apuda was one of the first members to die consistently when EXL didn't have to come back in. So understanding what they need to kill first of all, and then being able to capitalize on that further was, was really important for EXL esports. So um, we are still seeing, I think, a bit of a case where Mega are still having to rely too much on Apuda. If he's not the one getting the kills, Mega are not winning the fights. And then even in the cases where he is getting the kills, again, three kills to start off with. Yeah. That is a big advantage to play with. Mega still unable to win. And it's because of that same thing, like you said, they're kind of having to rely on Apudo to carry. And that's having a lot of unintended consequences for this team. You're seeing them having to do things like, like I don't say having as though this is inherently negative, but stuff like uh, having him on the Widowmaker there, on, um, on Garden, not Gardens, on City, City Center, Center, on Oasis. It's doable, it's perfectly fine, but it does mean you have to play a little bit further back. So they get those three kills. You combine that with their lack of proactivity that they're currently suffering from. That's why they can't get anything done with those three kills. Because you, you take that against EXL, who had already got another counter trade in there prior to that. It was a numbers advantage, but not a big one. But EXL had the ground. EXL were willing to go forward. They were willing to dive. Even by the time the tanks that dove were dead, the rest of the team, like you noted, had reinforced, had taken the point. Mega had to team wipe to actually get that point. If three kills isn't good enough, there's something else going wrong. And it is to do with how they've been playing lately. And it's really unfortunate to see that even the carry potential from Apudo isn't enough to rescue this team right now. I do want to also mention the sort of change around on the DPS side. So when we got into the start of the season, coming out from the end of the last season where we saw Apudo on more of a projectile flex DPS role, ended up playing mostly the hit scans like Tracer, this season we come around at the start of the season, pretty much all the way up until now, is Inzidana playing more of the Wado type of roles, leaving Apudo on for the Tracer. We see right away on this opening map here, Apudo's playing the Wado, Inzidana back onto the Tracer. So there has been, at least maybe just for one map, but perhaps we'll see it a little bit more, going back to the traditional mega roles where Pudo is definitely playing more of the projectiles, plus the Widow that was his additional pick that we've seen previously. We always kind of did consider him to be 
that Widow play for the team. So it was somewhat surprising to see Inzana come and do that. We also did expect Inzana to be the tracer player of the team. So again, very kind of strange to see Apuro being on that. But now I'd say like, uh, you know, kind of reset here for Mega going back to what they know. And it has helped. I think there's just a little bit of disconnect going on in there. Maybe they can iron that one out as they move on forward because their pick for the next map will be King's Row. It's only the one map down. It's only Oasis. There's still plenty of time to turn things around. And like you said, you noted the roll swap. And ends it up as well, I do have to say, was looking a little bit better, was looking a little bit more confident in that ground game this time. There does still just seem to be a bit of disconnect in the rest of the team where the engages are happening and also really struggling to keep their supports alive. They're letting a lot of uh, enemy dives get exactly what they want and they're not quite putting up enough resistance on that side of things. The other issue here is that usually Mega in these matches, specific, specifically this season, they've done reasonably well in Oasis and then have kind of gotten worse as the match progressed. Bar the two map wins they did get, which was kind of those map four wins where they did come back on one of the escorts and look pretty decent there and got themselves a win. But across the board, though, it hasn't really been an improvement past Oasis. So let's go in, let's get into King's Row and do it. see how they handle this let's right see now. how the King rows. They wouldn't have his row. He's, he's the king. Is the king's row. The king is rowing. I don't think kings would row if, the, if that was the case. But usually you'd have what oarsmen to do that. But the uh, point Woodrow is, was a president. Woodrow Wilson, not a, not a king. So kings wouldn't row. That's correct. Yeah, I'm glad we yep, covered that. That was just a. Yep, it was. I mean, I was really grasping at straws for that pun. <laughs> Kind of like how Mega grasped at straws to get a win here as well. And we would want to see what like they can... you grasp at straws for that segue. But let's go to King's Row. <laughs> so the point is, they are... We, we haven't seen them do well on the following maps after Oasis so far, bar some of these discords. So we need to see if Hybrid is going to be now for the first time in the season a good map choice for them. And Pudo staying onto the Widowmaker. I'm liking seeing him on the Widowmaker. It does put NZNR onto the Hanzo. Which I think is perfectly fine. He has played decent Hanzos here and there. Already seeing Apudo getting a bit of the work done, but gonna swap oh. things up. They're wanting to play goats, goats here. Yep, and they're gonna be looking to play it against a dive as well. This is a really smart swap because yeah. they know the defense is gonna want to dive into them. So they're saying if you wanna play into us, we're happy to brawl back into you. And already just barreling straight towards the point. The question now is can they make it count for something good? Dive onto Gabushi, but unable to finish him off. What they really need is Chloe and Zero, where they're not quite able to find them. Apudo getting low, but it is fine. Now they're in a really great situation where EXL have to get on top of them. They have to engage Mega. Picking Chloe is exactly what Mega have been needing. Now they start opening up. This is some good execution out of Mega. Good read. Good play. They're getting the mileage through now, and it's just a matter of closing out the inevitable. Yeah, this is exactly how this composition works as well for EXL Esports. They just can't get into these fights. They can't do it. The Coal is going to come out slightly late for Mega. But the point is, they've done it. They managed to get this cap as soon as they get onto the actual capture point itself. For EXL, it's too late. You can't dive back onto them. And Assassin's going to make the swap onto the fire here. Look to make a counter. And this is a good way to counter them out as well. If you get to play goats while still running the payload forward, you, I mean, you, you move at a very set pace. You can't go as fast as goats wants to go. Gives Assassin plenty of time to rain down the rockets. Now it's time to see these ultimates come up, though. So the other thing Mega have in their pocket, which is going to be a big help oh. for them, is these ultimates that we're talking about. Earthshot already Good coming down. Good save from Zero with those straight in with the Transcendence, and it is completely stunted what Mega can do in this fight. Rocket having to use the sound barrier to keep his team in at Apudo as well. The extra armor on top with the rally. EXL still got deep pockets with these ultimates. Self-destruct doesn't connect, but Yom one does. Finds his mark on NZNR, and that's already tipping the balance as Melon has played maximum disruption in the back line. Mega getting rebuffed. And Mega put so much into that fight as well, even the rally coming down towards the end. This time around, you do consider Peach, who probably wishes he had the coalescence, but even then, would it have been enough? Pulse Bomb from Yon one did way too much damage. The follow-up kill as well. And this is coming out after Tino one landed that first Earth Shatter. Now all they have is a Graviton Surge, which is still very effective, but I'm concerned oh. that Assassin's gonna shut them down. Yeah, I mean, he already has, right, with the pick on Apudo. And this is where Goat struggles just a little bit. They can't get that same headway, that same forward momentum that they really need. If they can re-establish it, they should be 
be able to win a fight and get a bit more progress, but they can't keep playing this back and forth game here. And note the positioning from EXL as well, always on this high ground where Mega can't just engage into the finding the correct time to go in, and this is the correct time. Grav does come down. This is a little bit rough, but they have made it work. Picking Assassin is very important for them, but they lose Rocket in the counter trade. They were very forward focused, and that did give Melon a lot of free time on the back line. Free time that he has yet to be punished for. Now self-destruct forward. Mega are continuing the brawl. And the payload is now actually getting underway. But EXL kiting back, trying to give themselves space to work with. But Mega now running them down. Should be able to finish off Melon here. Not going to use the Primal Rage. Back underway. Now, Rocco was such a hero there as well. Going up on the high ground while riding directly into Assassin's face. And just smacking him down essentially. Assassin and EXL needed to get a lot more out of that barrage if they were going to survive. Especially Especially they need Assassin alive, even if he wasn't going to get kills with the Barrage, just the damage of him being alive would have probably have swung the fight their way. Now we're going to get to the end of B. This is where Mega struggled previously though, is fighting when they are on the payload and getting engaged upon. It's where Goats is at its weakest. And again, Sound Barrier and Rally, but that's all they've got to work with, EXL. A lot of health. Yeah, now popping out their own kills, uh, not kills, tools, but they find zero and that's crucial. No Transcendence, so the cap, cap went over as went well. Over. EXL, bit of a slip there as they step off the payload, even as Assassin, DMX, NZNR, they haven't actually finished off the kill, nor did they close out on a Pudo who got very low there, so Mega gonna keep moving forward. And Mega have a lot of momentum to play with. They haven't actually lost a team fight for some time now, so they're able to continually rotate and challenge these ultimates. You have Mushroom and Pichu up with their ults now. Previously, Apuda and Rocket just used theirs, so still so much for Mega to use here. Oh, Rocket and so straight out. Yeah, so little. And it was right as ended and I was getting in the mech. If that had been a fraction of a second earlier, Mega could have gone forward with the uh, with the defense matrix out, found a Graviton in somewhere. But Mega, going to have respawns up. Should be straight back on the bandwagon without too much waste. You do now see the kind of effect that Assassin can have with these Rocket Barrages. You've got to think back on that B phase, back on the streets. If that barrage had actually hit, we wouldn't even be on this position right now. But for Mega, they have been slowed down somewhat. They have now been cut in half as well. So not where Mega want to be for the time being. Melon's looking to take advantage of that halving of Mega. Doesn't quite find the opportunity there and is now just waiting. They should know he's up there by now. He's decided... They got no idea. Yeah, they actually seem to not. And again, he's going to be able to do this for free as Mega put their eyes forward. Melon is able to catch them unawares from behind. That is a decent Earth Shatter out front though, and they have been able to address Melon, which means Zero, where despite having the Transcendence out, is not able to save his team. It is Divide and Conquer, but it is Mega doing the conquering right now, looking to push forward for this home stretch now. If they can keep EXL divided as they respawn, they should be able to get it over the line. This is so much of a Pudo getting free reign as well. Melon's job was quite clear. He wanted to hunt a Pudo down, but couldn't quite finish the job himself dying to a Pudo, and now he's unopposed yet again. Mega with all these ultimates now looking to finish this fight. Yeah, that sound barrier is perfectly timed, just means that the few members of EXL who are alive, who are out of the base, do not have the damage to get any kills over. That means Mega will be able to fully cap out with just under two minutes left on the clock. That is a very good sign. There's a lot of mileage going out from that ghost composition as well, especially right from out the gates. They noticed the defense. It was going to be a dive. They didn't have to play into a Rissa Hog, so they're thinking this is going to be the answer, and it has been. And it has been also for the entirety of that attack, which is a lot more than what a lot of teams could possibly achieve. A lot of teams end up having to make some changes along the way as well. The one big change we noted was Apudo going onto the Watermaker, and it was super effective. Now on their own offense, I certainly do expect EXL. They have the ability to cap out. They had the aptitude. Indeed, I would say they should be able to. But Mega have actually set themselves up here to win King's Row outright if they can just stop up EXL, stop them from capping out at any juncture. Even just running down the clock, letting EXL have a worse cap time could be a potential winning point for Mega. At the very least, they have done the groundwork to create a winning position now, Mega. The question is, will they finish creating that winning position? Will they get themselves to the point where they are that one team fight away from closing it out? And then from there, the question is, can they win 
exactly that one team fight. It's actually a not a half bad time bank for them as well. A lot of teams end up going into the overtime or way under one minute. So for Mega Esports, even if we do go into the time bank, assuming EXL don't have a crazy good time, it's still very competitive. So definitely looking at Mega's foundations here, the fact that they finished the map, giving themselves a really good chance of winning King's Row. But a lot has to get answered, and especially this first point. Because Mega Esports capped this out in one attempt. Yeah. XL Esports are going to need to at least do that if they want a good time towards the other parts of the map. If Mega can just stop them up at least once or twice, burn down a bit of that clock, set themselves off well. But EXL playing GOATS themselves now. It worked for Mega, and we saw EXL play a GOATS esque team cop on Oasis to great effect. So, can Mega answer? The answer for Mega really is for Puno and Zena to have these angles to work with, but the other thing is, how long can Tita Watt and Mushroom stay alive? <laughs> the answer, not very. Yeah, not very long at all, even with the res coming in, it does mean Tita Watt is up, but Puno and Enzo are going to have a hard time getting any mileage here. Also, even if they get the Dragon Strike, they'll be miles from a grab Dragon. Tidawat down, Pichu as well. And unless a miracle comes out of NZNR or a Pudo, it is looking like it is all over Rover for Mega. In a similar time, EXL are gonna be able to cap out this point A. It's gonna be one kill from a Pudo, but unfortunately one kill's not good enough. You could see the decision making there was good from the DPSs. Enzo and Apudo are gonna set up a crossfire while the tanks are gonna try and stay alive on the point. Delay EXL for as long as possible. Apudo and Enzo are gonna be unopposed and that's how they could have won, but it wasn't the case. Now get Mega, gonna have to attempt something else here. Dragon yeah. does come out. Not gonna get the mileage though, a little bit wide. They one. do get Melon, that's something. Doesn't get him with the Dragon itself though. The Dragon got him low, it's the headshot that does it. And this could indeed should be the difference maker here for EXL if they want a better time. This yep. was where they were able to repel Mega. If they get repelled for too long here, and indeed they actually had, they've been stopped up at this archway. That one kill on Melon did allow Mega Esports to launch some oh sort of dear. defense, but Pichu going down is the one that you didn't want to see. He's got the Transcendence and now they're down there. But Rocket landed an amazing bio grenade. Not able to finish off the kills from it though is unfortunate. It's bad news for Mega. They do demake Gable Sheep, but they really needed to finish Melon in that same space. Excel are in this. Yeah, exactly. That extra time with the tanks mostly alive. Let's goats shine. They want to sit up close and personal and brawl like that. And imagine how differently that could have been if there was a Transcendence in the mix. And the thing is, Rocket's uh, Bio Grenade there did have a lot of stall up. They did slow down EXL considerably. The issue is Mega couldn't quite get the kills out of it. And you're right, the Transcendence probably would have been the game changer. Mega still have a lot of vaults to play with, but it is Yom one waiting in the, the flank here, realistically. This could be a big change. Yeah, here's the other option for a difference maker. If Mega can stop there EXL, not let the cat go where EXL did let it go over. The Riptide doesn't quite find anything, but Chloe and Melon are low. Getting Chloe is good news. No sound barrier on the table, and now they can start getting the work done. Great grab onto the whole nine yards of EXL. Going to be able to close out on a few more members. Melon knows full well that that Earth Shadow will not do anything for him. Assassin, last man standing around this point here. Oh, I guess Gabushi technically counts. And he does make it work. He does get something done, but... EXL are going to get held off. This is a very favorable position for Mega. And Tito, what the decision making there as well. Note that he went forward, challenged the supports, challenged the backline at EXL, takes down Chloe before Chloe decides to use the sound barrier. Now kind of wishes he probably did. You did see that Graviton Surge come out from, I believe it was uh, Yom one as well, but it caught members so far back that EXL couldn't engage on those court members. There was no follow-up. So for EXL, their entire offense was too split. Now, they don't quite have the grab dragon combo, but they do have the dragon. Oh, a photo down kill. is rough. And Zero has decided it's time to fight the coalescence. It's out, but there's the dragon. Or is a spanner in the works for EXL? They have to move, give it some space, give it some respect. Self destruct in. No mileage from that one. And Mega moving forward now, trying to get aggressive. Not finding any kills though. And now all out of ultimates. EXL are out themselves, but coming up on a dragon and have the kill on Mushroom. That's not good news for Mega. Dragon through the wall, splits Mega up. And that opens the tank line. They pop T to what? Now looking to get onto the breast. Apudo does answer a couple back, but this should not be a cap coming through for EXL. And the thing is, that's right, Apudo is the one answering back, but there's only so much he can do as one member. He got the two kills there, but that's two kills kind of too late. He's the one guy at the call center. There's too many phones coming. Please hold. <laughs> well, there's some bigger esports. Uh, some dinky elevator music. That's the worst. 
Now they got these like digital cues. You can hang up or call you back. I don't trust that. I stay on the line. And speaking of staying on the line, Mega trying to hold the line. He almost got to respond to this. So he sort of kind of had enough here. One dragon's going to come out from Inzana. They should buy them to... some space to work with, but they haven't been able to walk forward on it. Yeah, that's the thing. I mean, it buys them space to work with, but they've got to actually do the work. It's like, you know, you nail the interview and you get the job, but they didn't actually show up on the first day. EXL going to run right in there, take the gainful employment and make bank with it. Already looking to cap out what should be a better time than Mega unless there is a solid last hurrah. The solid last hurrah is going to come from Apudo. Chloe going down means no restrictions. Oh, no. But look at that Earth Shadow. What that was save, huge. though. Pichu in with that transcendence and uh, speaking of difference makers i remember a few fights ago when that wasn't an option in this instance oh no oh it got stuck over the line by assassin oh they would won the fight they were trying to run down the last few members what a sneaky move oh that is so unfortunate because that could have been a full hold but that's what i was saying earlier can they get into that situation and can they convert off it well they got into the situation and they unfortunately whiffed the fight just through some quick creative thinking from assassin it's not even the fact that it could have been a full hold but if they weren't going to complete the full hold it would have been a better time in the time bank going in so exile esports 241 versus 148 it's nearly one minute. You can do a lot with that one minute time if you're EXL. Not only that, but you're going to force Mega to attack first. So I think the damage may be done here somewhat. It's definitely not final, but for all the work that Mega had originally done, it feels like a bit of a shame to have it go this way. Got to be kicking yourself right now if you're Mega as well. So unfortunate. In that minute in esports time is an eternity. It's like dog years. One regular minute is like 10 esports minutes. The other thing is, EXL are running a pretty... This kind of composition with the one heal, as long as Chloe doesn't go down, this is pretty tough to crack. There's a lot of uh, members to get through. So Mega Esports is going to take some time, even if they can get this first cap. They're probably not likely to get it in one attempt, and, and even so, it's just probably not going to be a good time. That's the thing, that one minute is that one extra attack. So the clock is ticking for Mega, and that means the pressure is on. They get two good ones, or maybe three bad ones. They're looking to go for uh, almost a full dive here. Rocket made the change onto the Ana as well, so we're looking to see if this Bionade can oh, make hello. the difference. Pichu is on the hog, so again, being able to get EXL off this high ground very important, but Mega don't quite have the Arista to do so. Who? Uh, Zero kind of has a similar idea, only it's get people on that high ground, isolate them, catch on Rocket. Bit rough for Mega means no sleep dart, no fire grenade, and off the back of that, Mushroom is gonna go down. Mega needs to now lose this fight quickly. They oh nearly got a oh, third in among that as well. They've been able to sneak that out, that would have been good, but like I said, now they just need to lose this fight quickly. They have just under a minute left, which is just enough time for one last good fight. But Mushroom is getting staggered out here. The problem is if you're looking at sneaking out in terms of those kind of strengths, you know you're already onto the back foot. One minute's already off the clock now for Mega, and they don't quite have enough distance. We're now getting to the round of ultimates as well. Assassin coming up to a tire, one decent tire, one or two kills, ends Mega's push again. And Mega have made a compositional change, they're no longer on that hard dive. They've kind of got this halfway thing going on. That could half static, half yeah, dive. Exactly, it could spell disaster because the static half is gonna die to this rip tire. That leaves the mobile half high and dry Puno straight into it. Was looking to get the catch while Assassin was channeling it, punished for that one. Zero it did go down. NZ are now trying to run circles around this tank line. They pop Gable Sheep, but not in time before he gets the self-destruct out. No one dies from it, but a fire more time for Gable Sheen gets to reset the mech. T to what dead. They're about to go into the overtime. Need to keep presence on the point and also need to stabilize in members, but I don't think they can do it. Too many members, too low on health. They keep losing the soul healer as well. You compare that to EXL. Chloe has done an excellent job of keeping everyone topped up, working double shift practically. A true nurse indeed. And Mega are going to get fully held, now have to do the same to only be able to force a draw. 
There was just so much groundwork that Mega needed to do there to actually complete that camp right from the opening moment as the gates opened up there and Mega walked out. As soon as you saw that defense running out there, you know the setup for the attack has to be very good. You have to push EXL backwards. You have to actively take space away from them until you get control of the cap and you forced EXL to come down and respond to you. But there just wasn't time for Mega to do that and EXL knew it. And it's just unfortunate. This is now plenty of time, realistically, for EXL to get just a single third. And uh, look, it's not fair to say that it's all because of Assassin sneaking that cap over, but that certainly hasn't helped things. When you consider that Mega, there was a chance that they wouldn't have even been in this overtime situation, they're now in a situation where the best they can get is a draw. Certainly doesn't feel like uh, good mileage from what was a very decent attack run initially. But it's all in the past now. Mega just need to reset themselves, focus on the task at hand, try and full hold EXL. Which is why it's so clutch for EXL to stop Pichu from getting that initial tick as well, because that would have given Mega the opportunity to maybe get a full hold and win this map. But like you said, a draw is the best they can hope for, and EXL have the time to sort of address what Mega are going to run on this defense. Ends in on the May, we have seen this, but the issue is we've seen it and it hasn't been good. Makes me a little worried, but there they go. Going to try and isolate the two tanks. But in fact, you're Squish locked in here with wall. me, says Melon, as he finds NZNR, who wasn't able to go all Ice Cube in enough time. Don't know what that was. Ice Cube, Icicle. Bit of a combo of the two. But at any rate, it's uh, currently Mega being put on ice. As Tidawat now dropped down in Apudo. He is uh, still alive, but getting dived. It's only a matter of time. No, it's not. It's a matter of time for Shut EXL. Up. Shatter out, that's one they needed desperately, and now Apudo finally going down just when it looks like Mega might stabilize. EXL have got the final few kills through, that's going to be the third caps out. When you consider that Mega couldn't do it in two attacks, EXL did it in one. So, uh, thank Assassin for that one, giving them the opportunity in the first place. But the team as a whole really making it work. And towards the end there, thematically we see a very similar thing that we always see unfortunately so far this season with Mega Esports and that is if you have a Pudo playing something like a Widowmaker, quite often it seems like you're buying time for a Pudo to get the job done and you're looking at him on the back line, you're looking at how much damage he can do, takes down Gay Bullshies, make, takes down Gay Bullshies, but the rest of the Mega team have already been evaporated and Mega is the lone, rather Pudo is the lone Widowmaker isn't going to be the one to touch the point. He needs the rest of the team to stay alive from. He needs the rest of the team to buffer and buy him as much time and space as possible. But uh, that's not happening today. That's not happening at least in the first half of this match. It, it, it's a bit rough. Mega, Mega are like a restaurant and like Apudo is like the only chef who can make one really critical ingredient. And you get too many orders with that one ingredient in, and that's it, you're done for. Like, the whole kitchen just falls apart. You can't keep up. It's a bottleneck. And that is kind of what it feels like. It's like this, this DPS bottleneck, right? Like, everyone's just working hard to buy a Pudo extra time because there is a bottleneck of, like, kills he needs to get and time he has available. And that's to say nothing of the enemy team trying to kill him, trying to shut him down. It's just not a viable game plan for Mega, but this entire season long, it's been the only one they've got. Well, it doesn't even seem deliberate. It seems like a result. It seems like, you know, a sort of symptom of more core issues yeah. going off the team. So, you know, and it's, it's we're now into the final match of the entire season for them, but we're still kind of seeing if this is somewhere where they can get something back. Again, only two map wins across four matches now. Going to the fifth match. Haven't found their third map just yet. We're not at the end of the series, but halfway through, it's a 2-0 and zero for EXL Esports. Now, Kings Row did look like it was winnable for Mega at certain stages, mm -hmm. but it's you can only get so close and then still fail that many times. And, and that's the reality, right? Like, it was close until it wasn't. You know, it was close until they got full held and then they lost the cap in a single push. That's the reality there. When you're in that time bank situation, you can kind of disregard how good a, your previous attack or defense or what have you looked. Because actually it's how that exact moment plays out that really counts. Because sure, they had a, about a minute less time. But when you consider they capped out in one push on their initial attack, that one minute 48 was plenty of time to cap out. Yeah, and I, that's why I would say like even if... Assassin didn't get that back cap even if it was stopped and even if assuming it wasn't a full hold on C for Mega Esports and we did get to go to the time bank and we had more time than zero seconds which would have been the overtime 
you could see right there one attempt from EXL. Even if EXL had ridiculously left less time, it, they wouldn't have needed it. And that's the difference maker right now. Like when Mega are getting those sorts of pushes, it feels like a flash in the pan. It feels like the one good one among a bunch of average mediocrity. But when it's EXL, it's consistently good. Well, let's see who can remain consistently good here. Can EXL continue this win streak in this matchup against Mega Esports? We're going to see a turnaround. Can Mega bring it back on their final day in the Pacific Contenders region? When we come back, those answers will be here for you. So we'll see you soon.